Gabby Moreno, welcome back to Australian Musician. Thank you so much. So happy to be here. Uh, last time we spoke to you was at the Firefly nightclub in Melbourne in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. The world is a, a very different place now. Um, as an artist, how have you handled <laughs> the pandemic and, uh, and whereabouts? Well, um, I was here in LA when it hit. I was actually in Guatemala. Um, I had just been named uh, UNICEF's Goodwill Ambassador and and I went to Guatemala to sort of receive the honor and like um, also go and see some of the work that they were doing in, in some of the villages. And as soon as I flew back, the lockdown began. And so um, it was it was very rough, of course, for everybody, for the whole world. Um, but I lost like a lot of opportunities that I that I was really looking forward to. I watched, I was actually working on a, a musical for Broadway and, and that got like canceled completely so that was really really sad because it was like a big dream of mine to like it still is <laughs> um and so i don't know i just kind of began to to just look on the bright side of things and i i started doing a lot of production work from home so i i learned how to use uh, music programs and you know record myself rec uh edit and I actually ended up producing a lot of songs during lockdown. So I, I even produced a, uh, a few songs that that will will be on a new album that Omara Portundo is gonna release very soon. So that that was really really fun. You know, it was really really amazing to be able to do something else rather than just sit and feel sorry for myself. And I know that it was it was hard not to not to be able to make some money like as a lot of artists us artists do nowadays which is by touring but I don't know I, I like I said I just had to like think positive and just just um think what what good can come out of this so, which, so that's uh, what I did <laughs> which recording program did you decide to learn logic <laughs> yeah um, I was using, I was, I'm ashamed to say this, but I was using GarageBand before that. Of course, just for my little demos, you know. But then I realized that Logic, I mean, it's obviously a step up from, from GarageBand and it, it sort of uses some of the similar um, things. So that was, that was a bit easier to learn than say Pro Tools. And um, yeah, now I really love it. I love editing. I really like <laughs> I could just do that all day just sit in my computer and just edit away yeah. it's fun so all going well you'll be playing Warm Adelaide uh in Adelaide in March uh have you played Warm Adelaide before and what are you looking forward to most I've never played Warm Adelaide I've never played any of the Womads um so I'm really excited um I have been to Adelaide and and it's always been great fun. You know, every time I've been there, I just, I just remember really loving it. So I don't know, this is going to be very special, I think, you know, it's uh, obviously I haven't been back to Australia now in like three years. So, so it's going to be really fun to get back there with my band. And also because we're going to be playing some new songs from, from an album that I'm going to be releasing in, in April, a brand new album of, of, original music that which I haven't done that in also five years so so that's also very exciting yeah yeah you have a new single maybe today maybe tomorrow is that in yeah. of the rest of the album I think so yeah um I got to I actually got to record that particular single in New York when uh this was like pre-pandemic in in 2020 like January of 2020 and um I, I, got, I got to have one of my all-time guitar heroes on it, Mark Rebo. He, he, he plays on it, and so I was super, super excited to have him on it. And then I asked him to play guitar also on a bunch of other songs for my album. I still haven't met him in person, if you can believe that. So I <laughs> just, again, it's just like he, he, does, he does his thing in New York, and then he, he's been sending his parts, and you know, we put it all together with, with what we recorded here in L.A. So are you self-producing? Yes. Yes, I decided to produce this one myself. Yeah. Uh, are there any other collaborations on the album? 
Actually, yes, there's one song that I collaborate with Chris Thiele. He, um, he sang on it and he played his beautiful little mandolin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, the the Punch Brothers are a fantastic band. I'm actually gonna go see them tonight. They're they're playing here in LA. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. So most gigs are going ahead at the moment. Over there. Yeah, I haven't had any con cancellations. Granted, I haven't really been doing a lot of shows, but um, I have. Well, Australia is the first the first thing I'm doing this year, but I've I've played shows here in LA last year and. Um, also went to to the East Coast. I did some things in in DC and you know little things here and there, one offs. I haven't done a, a tour, a proper tour. So Australia would be like my first tour since the pandemic. Yeah, uh, tell me about the band you you're bringing down. Well, we uh, see yeah. familiar faces. Yes. Um, so I'm I'm bringing they they were there last time. So on drums Sebastian Imans and on bass Kimon Kirk. And we're just going to be our, you know, power trio. <laughs> Have you, really yeah, what guitars are you bringing down? Have you picked up anything new? Oh, well, I, I mean, I obviously have to think about, you know, the whole, oh, just, just, I wish I could bring more gear with me, but sometimes, you know, like it just costs a lot of money to like, you check it check so too many bags and guitars anyway so i i was thinking about bringing my oh, you can see over there i have my yeah. where is it this one right here that's my duesenberg the electric guitar so i think i'm gonna bring that one which i think i brought last time too and i'll see if i can bring an acoustic guitar as well maybe i'll, I'll carry it with me inside the plane yeah. um and that'll be my gibson I always play that one too, my, my Gibson um, uh, LG2. And that's, where is it? I don't know where that one is. I was just, I was just playing it. I think it's in the living room, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> so what were your set list comprised of? I guess you'll be playing tracks off Spangled because you wouldn't have had much opportunity to play music from that album. That's true, yes. I yeah, I'll definitely be playing um, across the borderline, which is the song that that I did with um, with Jackson Brown, and, and that was sort of the single of of that album. But I'm also excited to be playing some new music, some some new songs from from my new album because it, it it'll be released in April, in late April. So so I think that'll be a good time to start playing some of the new songs. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Spangled was a collaboration with the great Van Dyke Parks. Yes. Uh, an amazing uh, musician, Ranger. Um, what kind of things do you learn from working with someone like that? Oh, my goodness. What? It's just everything. Absolutely everything. I mean, what an absolute legend he is. And any time I was with him in the studio, it was just, it was, I don't know. It was like, it was like, you just like, it's like going to school, you know, it, it's incredible. Um, but I think what would really change for me was my, my perception of pitch. <laughs> and, then, and I'll tell you how, like in the past, like I would go and I would record my songs and usually like I'm, I'm the kind of person that just records like a few takes and then I'm okay. And then I'll just, choose like one full take of something and that'll be it like I'm not too worried about like oh this is this is I wasn't worried about that. oh this is pitchy this is not whatever oh my goodness but working with Van Dyke like he would just be like that's flat that's sharp that's flat that's sharp and I was like what how, how are you how and things that probably to like the common ear you know they they won't even like they I'm telling you like you know he, he can hear if something is 10 cents flat or something it's crazy and I think that by working so much with him but it, it, it somehow like that changed my ear to you know now I now I can really hear it I can really hear when I'm flat I can really hear when I'm sharp and I'm like you know what no I can do that better and so <laughs> so I think that's <laughs> that's something that I gotta say that that I gotta say thanks to Ben Dyke yeah. Uh, something else that you've done uh, since we last saw you, uh, you wrote the soundtrack to the movie Language Lessons, uh, yes. which has been getting great reviews. 
Um, how different was it uh, recording a soundtrack to a normal studio album? Oh my God, it was, it was crazy because um, again, it was during the lockdown and I had never done anything like that in my life. The reason why Natalie Morales, bless her heart, she's an, she was the director of the film and she's also uh, the actress. And um, I met her over 10 years ago here in LA because she, she was in, one, in a few episodes of, of the show Parks and Recreation, which I wrote the theme song for. And that's how she knew me. Just, she was like, oh yeah, you, you know, co-wrote this really great theme song. And, and I think she came to see one of my shows, but, but then we kind of lost track of each other and we didn't, I don't know, never heard from her again. And all of a sudden I get an email saying um, that she's working on this, this film and that she's looking for someone to compose the music. And I was like, at that moment, I just kept thinking, well, I'm not doing much. I can't go out on tour. Like, I'm, this is the scariest thing I can think of possibly doing right at this moment where I'm like, I've never done it. But I, something, he said, I have to do it. <laughs> it's a challenge and I have to take it on. So I did. And I, I don't even, I can't even tell you like how, I mean, it was so much fun, really. I just, they were just sending me like the cues and I would just kind of sit here with my guitar and just, it was so fun to just write music and not worry about lyrics. It was just, just music. And I realized how much I really love, love doing that. I wish I could do it more. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> you think you might do an instrumental album in the future? Oh, hey, that's an idea. I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. I, I always like, for me, like the music is, is, is easiest. It's what comes to me like the easiest. The lyrics, I have to really sit down and like really think about it. And it takes me time, you know, but, but the music is sort of, yeah, whatever. Like it's just yeah. fun. <laughs> Um, you've been involved in uh, quite a few TV and, and film projects now. Do you have any more coming up? A any more what? TV or, or film uh, projects? Ooh. Oh, I guess I can tell you about something that I that I was a part of. Um, yes. So I, I haven't told this to anybody. You, you are getting the, what, what do you call it? We say primicia in Spanish. <laughs> The scoop. <laughs> the scoop is like it's like the, the, the first scoop. Um so last November I was asked to be in an episode of a new Guillermo del Toro series. Wow. On net on Netflix. Yeah. And it's just a little cameo appearance. It's, just, it's actually me performing. But that was really fun. And I think that's that'll be out later this year sometime. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. With the, the director is uh, of that because it's it's um I think the series is called Ten After Midnight, okay. and every episode is a standalone, and uh, they, it, each episode has its own director. So the the episode that I was in is with um, Catherine Hardwick. She she directed it, and the actor in the episode was uh, Rupert Grint, whom you may know from Harry Potter. <laughs> Fantastic. So that was so that was really fun, and of course, another thing that I had never done in my life is just like be in a. I mean, well, it essentially felt like a movie set, of course. So that was incredible. I got to I got to um, fly to Toronto to do that for a few days. Yeah, do you actually have a, a long list of bucket list projects that you hope to get to, or <laughs> or the things generally just pop up unexpectedly? Some really just pop up unexpectedly. I'm like. Oh my God, like this, this is uh, insane. Yeah. And, it, and it's actually crazy because um, the, the filming took place on the very same day that the Latin Grammys were. And I was, I was supposed to be at the Latin Grammys because I was nominated with um, mm. a song that I, that I sang with Omar Aportun. But I was like, I have to, I have to go to Toronto. <laughs> so I didn't go to the Latin Grammys. And I ended, I ended up going to Toronto. So yeah. Yeah. That's how, yeah, it's just, it was just like a once in a lifetime opportunity. I never know, like, I am, I'm always thinking like, oh, this will never happen again. So it's better do it now, you know, <laughs> it's like, and really like seize the moment. Yeah. Uh, a few days ago, there was a video uploaded, uploaded of a duet track with a Latin artist, I think, Leva or Leva? Leva, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Tell, tell us about Leva. Oh man, he's like, he, he's huge in, in Spain. 
and and also also Latin America, like more and more and more people are starting to to know him about his music, and he's just an incredible, incredible artist, incredible uh, singer songwriter, and I've never met him in person, but he he knew of of me through some some mutual friends in the industry, and and he reached out to tell me that he he um he he was planning on doing an album with all duets with female artists from different parts of Latin America. So she, so he asked me if I could sing one of his songs with him for the, for his album. And so it's that song that just came out and, and, the, and he did a video for it too. I'm not in it, but it's a really beautiful video. And it was, yeah, it was, it was amazing. We, we became friends, but again, like I've never met him in person. So it's one of those crazy things that, you know, that can happen nowadays through technology because <laughs> uh, I because I got to record here and then we actually wrote a song together that will be on my new album so it's it's a, it's a beautiful thing how yeah. this all came about uh you mentioned uh, being a UNICEF ambassador and and the 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 trip you took just before the pandemic hit um tell, yeah. tell me more about your your work with UNICEF Okay, so they at, at the beginning uh, when they when they named me uh, uh, an ambassador, this was like right before the pandemic hit in, in 2020, and I was in Guatemala, and so I got to visit some of the villages um, where they are, you know, working like firsthand with with women and their children, and showing them about nutrition and you know different different tools for education and things that it's really beautiful the work that they're doing so so that was just kind of just to show me what 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 they're all about and, and you know how they're trying to improve communities different communities in Guatemala and um and then um I've been doing little things with them like I I ended up uh writing a song for <laughs> to tell people to stay at home this was like right when we were in lockdown um so i wrote a song called yo me quedo en casa which means i stay at home and it was mainly like a like a children's song and so it, that was that was like a collaboration that i did with with them and actually right now i'm going to be producing an album uh, of children's songs but sung by children in guatemala so so I'm just going to be producing it and writing a few songs. And, and so that, that'll be the next project that I'm going to be doing with them. Yeah. And then whatever else. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm so happy to, to be collaborating with them in any capacity. Yeah. Well, Gabby, yeah. We're, we're so happy that uh, you'll be returning to Australia. Fingers crossed. Uh, yes, yeah, so please. I know, right? <laughs> Nowadays, you just always have to say fingers crossed, right? You just yeah. never know. But yeah, let's hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, appearing at Warm Adelaide in March. Gabby Marino, thanks for chatting to us. Thanks so much.